the only thing I have to say about fat is the fat you eat is the fat you wear. It promotes cancer and heart disease. You know, I, Dr. John McDougall, am a medical doctor and an internist. I take care of adult diseases. But that's not what people want. What people want is they want to look good. They'll do anything to look good. They'll starve themselves. They will wire their teeth together. They'll have their stomach operated on. They'll do anything to look good. And the, mo the biggest attraction from looking good, or the most apparent distraction from looking good for most people is they're just too fat. You know, they have blubber every place. Uh, that's not it though. There's a lot more than just being too fat that detracts from our personal appearance. That unhealthy food gives us a blue discoloration to our skin, gives us you know, greasy skin that the animal foods make us stink terrible. Uh, detracts from our from our personal appearance. And uh, the reason people get fat is because they eat fat. I, you know, from my lips to my hips, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. So you eat fat in the form of uh, animal foods primarily and vegetable oils and then us uh, vegetarians can easily dip into the nuts, seeds and avocados and uh, healthy margarine, so to speak. So the fat you eat is the fat you wear. It just goes, it goes from the spoon right to your hips and uh, belly and Actually, it goes there so effortlessly, you can take a needle and suck the fat out, take it to the lab, analyze it, and you can tell what people like to eat. You suck their belly fat out, and it's full of monounsaturated fats, and they're into olive oil. If it's full of uh, trans fats, they're into margarines and shortenings. If they're full of omega-3 fats, then they're into eating fish. You can tell what they like to eat. So when my people want to lose weight, they want to get their, that part of their appearance back, I ask them to put a mantra in their mind. The fat I eat is the fat I wear. And so when they pour that olive oil on or whatever, plan on it. Body's not going to burn it. Not much. It's going to store it. It's that metabolic dollar for the day when no food is available, which I haven't seen in my lifetime. By definition, a mammal makes milk for its young. And all mammals do that. We were. Uh, Took a group to Hawaii last uh, year, and we're out on the boat, and we we're waving at mammals. You know, big mammals out there, and they were waving back at us. And there was the big, big, big mama mammal whale and her little calf whale. And that mama mammal was making just the ideal food for her little calf to make it all the way back up to Alaska for summertime. And if you analyze that. Uh, mammalian milk, you'll find it perfect for that little baby's needs, that calf we call it, that whale calf. And so a horse makes uh, milk perfect for its foal, and uh, a human being makes milk perfect for the infant. And a, and a cow makes milk perfect for a calf. The thing is, is that we have different nu nutritional needs when we're young than a calf has. They grow real fast. A little baby calf grows from 60 pounds to 600 pounds drinking milk. Now, if you fed a baby calf, cow, calf, human milk, the animal would starve to death. It would be protein and calcium deficient because it's not the right milk for that particular mammal. And somebody would probably arrest you for feeding human milk to a calf. It'd be some, some offense against uh, farm animals. But what do we do every day, all over the world, to tens of millions, billions of people? is we feed them a, a milk, ideally designed for a calf. And it overnourishes the infant and, of course, the adult. I mean, this is super octane stuff. You grow an animal from 60 to 600 pounds. So when people eat baby calf food designed to the, for that accelerated growth, they grow. So the uh, children, infants grow faster, and the moms and dads grow faster, and people get fat. This stuff is loaded with fat. It's, in its raw state, 50% fat. It, it, it's supposed to be. Well, that, that's the basic problem with cow's milk. It's the wrong milk for human beings. That's it, period. It's just the wrong milk for human beings. But then it gets even worse. It gets infected with all kinds of organisms like listeria and mad cow and salmonella and E. coli. And tuberculosis, because uh, farm animals are dirty. They have all these diseases, bovine leukemia virus. Uh, essentially, well, at least nine out, of, nine out of 10 herds in the United States 
are infected with bovine leukemia virus, which causes leukemia in cows, and maybe more. But, but, but this food intended for a cow, calf, is dirty. It's infected with all these organisms, and yeah, they pasteurize it and try and make a difference, but it, it's not a complete difference. It doesn't, doesn't turn it into a neutral food or even a health food by, by do, uh, doing that pasteurization. And, and then, so that's one dirty problem with cow's milk. The other dirty problem with cow's milk, in any form, milk, cheese, et cetera, particularly in the fatty forms, is that the chemicals in our environment are fat soluble. So the DDT, the PCB, the heptachlor, uh, you know, all that stuff from factory waste that's in the environment gets into the grasses and the grains, and then what happens is the, uh, the cow eats the grass and grains, and uh, those fat soluble chemicals, they get sucked up and uh, biomagnified in the cow. And these chemicals are then transferred to the next order of eating by the muscle or by the milk. So this dirty food, be it the muscle or the mammalian secretion known as milk, goes into the, the next generation, which is usually human beings, and they get all, uh, they get all uh, poisoned by all these environmental chemicals. And then <clears throat> the last person on the food chain is the baby sucking off mother's breast. I mean, this is a horrendous, horrible problem. Uh, back in the 1970s, uh, 1,400 women were analyzed in 48 states. Their breast milk was analyzed. And it was so dirty with environmental contaminants, they declared it a health hazard. Some of the dirtiest milk in the world today analyzed is among the uh, Inuit, also called, still by some people, the Eskimo, because uh, because uh, the mother's diet is a, a, a lot of animal foods just by nature of being Inuits and the kind of living they did. It's, it's the dirtiest breast milk in the world. It's five to 10 times more contaminated environmental contaminants than say a woman's milk in lower Canada. It, the, the, the tissues, I mean the, the physical tissues of an Inuit uh, and their secretions like milk are so dirty, they are an environmental, they themselves are an environmental toxic waste hazard. So, you know, the, the uh, cow's milk we're talking about right now is the wrong food, and it's dirty. And uh, causes all kinds of problems. I mean, we could go on for, for two hours talking about it.